Father, we worship you and glorify you. And we thank you for all of these, your family, my family, all together. Lord, we bless you. We praise and magnify you. We thank you so much for Jesus. So much for Jesus. So much for Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Would you say this with me? I say that a mockley is in revival. I say that this region of Florida is in revival. The blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dumb speak, the dead are raised, demoniacs are set free, maimed are made whole, and thousands and thousands, even tens of thousands, are born again in this revival. Amen. Glory. Sunday was really wonderful. At least it was for me, and I think it was for you. Just a real wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit here. Uh, we got out a little earlier than we normally do, but uh, there was nothing else to do but just uh, sit and be saturated for the time being after the Lord came with an exhortation. Um, I'm still in awe of, uh, personally myself, of, of the truth that is in that simple exhortation of uh, traveling, making it all the way to the Pool of Siloam going the full thousand yards or whatever distance it really was, but it was a, a good distance. And uh, you talk about social media. Jesus had his own. He knew how to gather the crowds. He knew how to, uh, uh, when such a thing as technology and Facebook was not around, he knew how to... Uh, bring the people together and knowing that there was miracles that were taking place. You see a guy meandering from uh, a place, a point of where he had received a word and then going all the way, however long that took him, and, and we demonstrated that uh, Sunday, or the Holy Spirit did, with mud on his face and then uh, maybe hours later to return. And... Uh, the, just the propaganda from that, people watching him go and people watching him return at a time when the city was bustling, had a tremendous effect. And there was a lot of people that saw the testimony of the healing power of God. And uh, that whole thing came off of an understanding of what Jesus said, uh, or what he asked really was... Um, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on, faith on the earth? And that faith that he was uh, talking about was described in a parable. But the whole parable described a tenacity, uh, a stick to uh, a willingness to keep going forward against all odds. And uh, this is really what revival is made out of. It really is. It's about... 95% uh, empowered grace and elbow grease, and about 5% sometimes feelings. I love when we feel his presence, and uh, I love it when I feel his presence in my private time. But if I weighed out the seemingly non-presence times and non-feeling times against the times where I felt or I even saw um, the, the productivity of what was taking place. If I was waiting for that to take place, we all would have quit a long time ago. But we are people that are being taught by the Holy Ghost, and we're understanding things by the Spirit of God like we've never 
understood before. And I, under, I, I really appreciated what uh, everybody said. But um, one thing that comes to mind right now is what Homer said by the Spirit is, let's come and get our briefings. I like the way he said that. The briefings is a good word. And it's like the Holy Spirit is uh, continually trying to uh, bring us into a place where he aligns us up as a body. And not only this body, but the people that are listening and the people that are watching. And uh, he's doing that for a purpose. He, everything is line on line. It's precept on precept. And if we, if we study hard, we're going to make an A. Amen. If we study real hard and stick to it. Praise the Lord. What happens as a result of enduring prayer and uh, not looking at the signs around you, things will happen. Things definitely do happen. Last Wednesday night, uh, just to give you a report of what prayer, that prayer works, um, I gave a request of a, a relative of mine, a niece that um, has been estranged from her family, uh, a, a young lady in her mid-20s. Uh, many of you know her. I uh, called her name out last week. I won't do that again right now. But um, she, was, uh, she was raised around Christianity and spent a lot of time in my home. Uh, growing up with my daughters and so she she understood um, things about God and accepted Christ at an early age and I think she was also filled with the spirit at an early age went through a very uh, tough marriage and um, had a couple of wonderful children that are still small and uh, after the the breakup of the marriage her life began to disintegrate and uh, a lot of things went amiss, and she began to become addicted to drugs and eventually become addicted to the worst kind of drugs. I mean, the, the worst of the worst, and uh, anything and everything. And then eventually became very just separated from uh, not only us, but actually her children. It was necessary for her children to be to be actually taken and uh, and she hasn't seen her children in, in over a year and nobody knew really at different times for weeks and perhaps months on end where she was at and this was not um, nothing like this had really ever happened in our family and, and, and I'm not boasting I'm just saying we weren't used to that none of my nieces and nephews immediate, immediate family had ever had such a problem and uh, Every once in a while, we would get reports uh, occasionally where she might be and where she might be staying. And uh, it was tough. It was very difficult for her mother, especially, and for her, her little children. Very difficult for her little children. And uh, still to this day, she hasn't seen them, and it's been over a year. But last night, I mean last week, uh, on a Wednesday night, we made a very bold uh, declaration of faith and I ask you to please pray for this individual that nobody knew where she was at basically and uh, at, at most of the time and that she was not had not been ready to to turn her life around and uh, the situation was just getting worse and worse and worse and uh, where we knew that she was at at times we uh, it, it was it was going to be possible for someone to take her life uh, or for her to take her own life, or just OD, just mainly because there wasn't a moment of the day that she was clean. And uh, so we prayed last Wednesday night. You remember that. And just in one week's time, incredible, absolutely incredible miracle has taken place. Um, Lucille Darby, which many of you have met, uh, has been here oftentimes. It was a very close personal friend of my mom has recently, in the last six months, moved to Georgia um, to be part of a ministry there of a young uh, women's ministry for those that are just like uh, my niece in the situation that she's in. And uh, 
the desperate, the, the girls that are out on the streets and the girls that are out for hire and the girls that are out there just really messed up. And, uh, and uh, she had been praying along with us for this particular individual. And lo and behold, isn't this amazing? She called and said, I need help. Would you please? I'm ready to come home. I'm ready to come home. And that was very, very different. There have been many times we'd tried to get her to come home, and she wouldn't come home. And as of tonight, she is at that facility in Georgia. Hallelujah. And uh, we'll be there over the next seven months. And they, they, they put her right away into a system where that uh, not only can she be, uh, you know, become clean and healed uh, every day. They're in prayer every day. They're in Bible studies every day. They're just, you know, just working these girls and, and loving them. That's the main thing, just loving them. And, uh, and they put them right back into a place where the, uh, the courts recognizes this particular ministry, and she will be eventually reconciled with her children once again. So isn't that wonderful? Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that's one, but that's through prayer, and that's, he's worthy to receive praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, Sunday, uh, I ask you to pray for um, John Meyer, Myers' wife, Jeannie Myers, and I explain to you the desperateness of the situation and how that we had prayed several times, uh, lifted her up and stood, and, and I'd put it in the prayer chain for many of you to pray for her. Jeannie had had an aneurysm a few weeks ago, um, only f maybe, maybe 50, late 40s. Um, and uh, born, I don't know her, but I, I, her husband testifies of her relationship with Christ, and I know that he is born again and spirit-filled although uh, born-again spirit-filled Catholic, and I've, I'm sure of that because I've talked to him enough. And uh, even last week, he, wasn't, he did not really realize that he could pray in tongues any time that he wants to. And he was just thrilled at that revelation and, uh, and started that process. And uh, so we prayed Sunday. Remember that great prayer that God came in here and, and graced us with. And uh, Sunday night, um, I got a call from him, and that was just before the holiday. And uh, John is, is a very, very thorough, and he's, he's a very smart guy. And he, he just went through the whole thing with me. Uh, this was after we had prayed and rehearsed where she was at and what had happened. And, and uh, much of what I had told you that she had had the aneurysm, and then after they actually did the cr cranial surgery, you know, that's tough. You know, cranial surgery is they remove your skull, they go into your brain, and they try to fix the aneurysm that has been there. And then she had, uh, the doctor said, really, she, you know, an individual can't go more than 20 minutes at any given time without uh, blood flow to the brain. Well, they had to cut her off in increments of five minutes, four times five minutes each, uh, to try to get in to repair those, those, that place or those places. And so um, it, was, it, was very, uh, it was very dicey. It was very sketchy, you might say, that, uh, that she might still, that she might come out of that with brain damage. And then later, uh, about a week later, she suffered another major stroke. And they went in and tried to, I don't know if it was a cranial operation, but they kept doing other procedures. And uh, he found out that the, the blood flow to her brain was actually um, uh, cut off more than 60 minutes at one, one given time. And, and uh, he just said Sunday night, you know, that they had really, uh, he was very, he was trying to speak as best as he possibly can. You can understand this guy is not around what you and I are uh, accustomed to hearing as in word and in teaching doctrine. But he was, he was, uh, he's, you know, he was basically uh, saying that he was giving her to the Lord and that he did not know what to do other than that. And that the doctors had said, we have done all that we can do. There's no other procedures. We can't continue to do what we're doing because um, there's nothing else to do. There's, we, we've gone to the limit. And uh, 
at that point, all her systems, it seemed to be, uh, if you, it wasn't verbatim how he said this, but the, the description was that she was shutting down. Uh, he was discouraged that a week or so prior to the operations, at least she could open her eyes and at least she was kind of kind of following them in the room and uh, after all of these procedures uh, there was really no eye openings there was she was just there um, and really not functioning once they took the breathing tube out Sunday um, then uh, the the worst part of the forecasted stroke appeared the the, the, the paralysis in the face the right side and uh, everything that looked possibly bad and this was right after we had prayed and uh, so I just did my best to console him and, and then said I'd like to pray for you over the phone and he said sure and he was driving home and I prayed for him and then the next day of course was the holiday um, Labor Day and uh, you know I talked to his partner which is my son-in-law and, and I didn't step out of faith I just said uh, these are some things that you need to prepare for and helping him um, and I did mention if things because I, I realize that this man is not in the position where we're at um, although I did say this when I was talking to my son-in-law I said look we have at the best uh, even when people are agreeing um, we've seen them go home so we're not putting any fault to anyone, but we, we understand where he's at and, and him not understanding the position of faith that we normally stand in. Um, so I, I was still standing, but I, I heard a message. I, I'll tell you what, let me advertise this. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about faith here a little bit and, and where we're going with signs and wonders and what we're supposed to be expecting. Um, Gary Carpenter started a new series last Wednesday night and I believe the first message is called uh, the power of authority and that was the the last Wednesday in August and uh, I listened to that um, just the day before and uh, that was on Tuesday that I listened to that Gary every once in a while will text me and tell me hey this might be one you need to listen to so I did and and man it was just very very powerful and it just continued to um, and I encourage you, listen to that, and it starts a series, and there will be more after that, and I think he did one Sunday. But it was just that place of what I gathered from myself personally as I was hearing um, this place of authority that we have and that we're supposed to be standing in. It reiterated that place of, of boldness to say, uh, unrelenting, this is where our stand is, and we'll have no different. We choose to have no different. Um, and so I, I went back personally into that, that posture of what we had prayed Sunday and was uh, postured myself in an unrelenting position to say, even against um, you know, what, what he is saying, because the last that he said is, he said, look, what, what I'm planning on doing and what we're doing is we're, uh, she's basically shutting down and again, that wasn't his exact words, but that was where he was headed. He said, um, the doctors can't do anything else. We've called in hospice, and they're going to come and get her. And uh, I'm resolved to, to uh, know that she's going to be with the Lord you know, very soon. And as I said, I prayed and then uh, for him. That was Sunday night. And then uh, as I heard that message again, as I heard that message the first time and took, took that stand of faith and said, this is what we prayed um, and, and didn't hear anything else back from him and knowing that she was really getting close to going. Um, Candy and I were up early this morning and we were uh, out in front of the house sitting on the bench and I got a call from John and uh, of course I answered it and, and left him on speaker because Candy's aware of the situation. He said, can I talk to you for a moment? I said, sure. And he reiterated and rehearsed what had been up to this point in her uh, proceedings health-wise and how that they had called in Hope Hospice and basically said, this is it, it's over. And uh, how that he had become real discouraged because prior to so much of what they procedures that they had done, at least she was uh, awake and kind of responding, but he hadn't seen that in the last week or so. 
And uh, so he said they called in Hope Hospice and they're ready to transport her over. And uh, I don't know if they got her already over there at the new facility. They did get her over to the new facility, but I, I'm trying to remember if, if uh, what I'm about to tell you started prior to. Anyway, just in the last uh, 24 hours, um, they get her over there and she wakes up and her eyes open and she's following people around the room and she's trying to respond to him and she's uh, uh, he's asking her questions and she's turning her head yes or no I guess or or whatever and uh, he sat beside her and, and put his hand on her and, and she began to rub his arm and let you know him know that she was responding to to him being there and this was a woman that was basically lifeless with having no ability to open her eyes and he was saying that she's going home soon and so as a result of that uh, her waking up and uh, he, he called me and he said uh, now I need to he goes I need to meet with you I need to meet with you and he goes I, I need to find out uh, basically he sees that it looks like she's gonna live and uh, he says, I, I, I need to find out uh, what, what do I need to do? You know, basically, what can you instruct me to do? I said, I'll, I'll meet you. So very early in the morning, I'll be meeting him at his office in Fort Myers to sit down and talk to him. And, you know, I'm going to have um, uh, Dave's book in my hand. I'm going to turn that over to him. And I'll have a list of uh, uh, scriptural confessions that I will put together and put her name in there and begin to show him and teach him how to stand for his wife. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So prayer works. Prayer works. These are just two, two miracles that have taken place this week that we, because we have uh, chosen to, to, to believe God. Amen. Um, let's just talk for a few minutes tonight about... Uh, people of signs. That's what we are. Signs and wonders. And that's who we are. Um, turn with me to Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. Hallelujah. Let's just call this the signs people, okay? Let's look at Mark chapter 16 and verse, we're going to look at verse 15. And this is the last words of Jesus prior to his ascension. And uh, this is what he is saying to his disciples. And of course, this is what he's saying to us. Um, in verse 15, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, let's just stop right there for a moment, because one of the things that we have uh, enjoyed around here, present tense, is uh, a scripture that we presently or recently discovered that's always been there, and that is uh, Matthew 24 and 14. And Jesus said, and this gospel shall be preached unto all the nations, and then shall the end come. Well... What does that mean to us? It means, it means everything that we discovered that this gospel is. This gospel is more than just words. It is words. It is doctrine. It is truth. But in that truth is everything that Jesus has manifested himself to the church to be. And that is deliverer. That is help. That is healer. That is everything that he demonstrated on a continual basis and everything that he empowered his apostles and his disciples to do. And, and when Jesus said, this gospel shall be preached, we understand this, that we have got a, we've got a, a foundational scripture that says, look, before he comes back, we're going to receive, if we stay steady and keep doing what we're supposed to do, we're going to receive with the rest of anybody else that's staying steady in the word of God, we're going to receive this outpouring in Jesus' name. And this outpouring is going to be ones with signs and wonders. It's going to be one with power. It's going to be one with demonstration. 
It's going to be ones, uh, a one that people will look at and uh, as prophecy by um, Pastor Dave said that even the finest minds will look at this and say without a doubt that God is in this. God absolutely is in this. Now Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and that's not talking about taking up snakes, okay? We've, all, we've taught that before. That's spiritual things that we're going to be able to take control over, the spiritual darkness of this world. They'll take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall do what? Recover. Is that supposed to be what we should be seeing in the church on a continual basis? That is supposed to be what is, is, should be happening, not some of the time, but all of the time. The two testimonies that I just gave, we all gave God glory, and we still give God glory. And I know that there's a fight in front of John, this man that I was talking about. We're going to equip him with what he needs to have. Uh, and, and, and we're going to believe that she totally comes through this thing and totally receives where one day she's standing here testifying to us. Um, but I'm telling you, those are supposed to be the testimonies that are, should be happening on a continual basis, on an absolute continual basis. And hitherto for, if you want to use that word, up till now, uh, the, uh, we've, we, it seems like we've lost more than we've won on those kinds of situations. But there is a pivotal point in the spirit, and I'm telling you, that pivotal point is happening now in Jesus' name. When now, I'm not talking about this service, I'm talking about this era of time that we're living in because of, first, the doctrine that we are receiving from above. Um, Pastor Dave prophesied or said years ago, he said there's going to come first a revival of doctrine and then a revival of signs and wonders. The first has to be laid because it has been, uh, through the centuries, pulled out from underneath the church. And the church, is, the church at large has gotten very melancholy, very laid back. It's, very, it's become very acceptable um, to just let things be as they were or are and just let people die, really, just to let people die. Not, beca not because people were totally uh, insensitive, but they just didn't know or could not take the stand that they really, really have something to say about that. The church has something to say about life or death. The church has something to say about miracles. And Jesus said here that these signs shall follow them that believe. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, this is verse 19, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. Well, I know where Jesus is at, don't you? And they, who's they? Those that heard, they went forth and did what? Preached everywhere. Well, what do you think they were preaching? The gospel. The gospel that was demonstrated to them. The Lord working, now this is what my King James says, with them, confirming the word with signs following, amen. Now, what I want to show you is this. And they went forth and preached everywhere, everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. First of all, uh, we see here uh, the commission. Okay, they call this the Great Commission. Go ye, and if you'll go, these signs shall follow. Shall follow. I promise you that if you'll go, 
these signs shall follow you. Okay, so we got the commission, and then we got the promise. We'll be, I'll be there. Your father will be there. And then at the end, you've got the confirmation to that promise. The Bible says here that the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. But notice something here. It's vitally important. It really is. Now, the Lord was with them, and the Lord was working with them. But the word them in the Greek is not there. Now, does your Bible have an italicized there? That means that word should not be there. It means that somebody put it there because they thought they wanted to help you. But if you take that word out, then it confirms what it's really saying. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Hallelujah. What was he working with? He was working with the word. What was he confirming? He was confirming the word. He was working with and he was confirming the word of God. Now that's vitally important. Why? Because that reiterates what Pastor Dave said years ago, that the, what's going to happen first is there's going to be a doctrine, doctrinal revival first. That's going to be the ground. See, lit, look, we're promised that we're going to be part of, or we say that we're going to be part of, because we know that the promise is there, that before the end happens, there is going to come a revival that is going to duplicate or replicate the original outpouring. That's what, we're claim that's what we see from the Word of God. This gospel, the one that Jesus preached, and the one that he preached was one of demonstration. That one will take place, and then the end will come. Now, we say that we're going to be part of that. But the reason why we believe that we're going to be a part of that is because immediately after Jesus commissioned them and promised them, then there was the confirmation. But the confirmation to what he said would take place was based on this. God went with them and was confirming his word with signs and wonders. Listen, we can't get off of his word and expect the signs and wonders. You're not going to get into a greasy, grimy, grace doctrine and expect signs and wonders to take place. You're not going to get in promiscuous all this and all that and teach all kinds of crazy things and have the kind of revival that God wants to give to the latter, to the latter church. But by His grace, not by our strength, but by His grace and by the teacher that stands beside us and is living on the inside of us, if we continue to pray the mysteries and continue to diligently seek after him, then he's going to come and continually confirm his word. Continually confirm his word. What we've got to do is preach his word. All we've got to do is line up and he's coming. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Hallelujah. The word signs means this. We had this in another... Uh, series that we recently did, but the, I'll remind you the word sign, um, say meno, say meno, okay? You guys remember that? You guys are incredible. It's an indication, especially ceremonial, supernatural, miracle, sign, token, or wonder. The one thing that I got out of it, the first phrase listed is an indication, Hallelujah. Signs are an indication. An indication of what? An indication that you are teaching truth. Because if he's going to confirm his word, and God works with you, and signs happen as a result of your, not just the pulpit ministry, not just the fivefold, but out there, do you... Again, can I get this over to you? It is God's best that we come in here every week with so many testimonies of miracles that are taking place and have taken place as a result of us just being out there in the world. That's where this thing is headed. The signs and wonders are not necessarily all going to take place in here. 
In fact, that will be a small volume compared to what's going to take place out there if we follow the word and if you follow him and if we continue to go into him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We must again take on the ownership of believing the word that Jesus spoke to the church. Can you say amen? We've got to own that. We've got to believe that. What ownership? That the signs of the believer will follow our lives. We are called to be a supernatural people. The indicator in these last days will be both, both the doctrine that we speak and preach and the signs that we demonstrate. One of the earmarks of becoming saturated in who we truly are, that means really starting to believe, really starting to believe who we are, is to become emboldened in what we know and what we do. Emboldened, in other words, filled with boldness. Absolute boldness. The, the boldness that is not manipulated by self, but the boldness that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 3. We've got to look at this. This is familiar in what we talk about. It's just not familiar in what so much we do and live, but it's going to be. It's going to be a major part of it. These men lived with an understanding, and the first church lived with an understanding of what Jesus said, signs and wonders are supposed to follow you. In other words, it should be a developed lifestyle that turns into a mentality that just expects it to take place. Uh, are y'all understanding? We have not got this uh, to the best of us. And I don't know that I'm the best of us. I, 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 I know you see me standing up here. Uh, and so you may think, well, there's, there's our leader. But to the best of us, this has not become, as of yet, in the spirit, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. In other words, we know it here, and some of it has trickled down, some of it is coming up, and we're getting some of our results, but it just, well, how do you know it's not die hard in us yet? Well, because they're still dying. They're still dying. And I'm, I pray, and they die, and they have died. Well, wh what did they have to do with it? Oh, just be quiet. I wanted to say shut up. But I didn't use that bad word, did I? Just be quiet. We have, it's not become. To these guys, they had seen the prototype, and they had watched him, and... As soon as they got filled with the Holy Ghost, they just said, we've seen it. We've lived it. He never laid his hands on anybody that didn't get healed. And listen, it's going to be trepidatious. I'll use, it's going to be kind of a little scary. It's going to get kind of uh, uh, scary in the sense of like, can we do this? Yes, we can. Yes, we can become emboldened by the Holy Ghost. Yes, we can begin to move out and expect signs and wonders. And when we get the calls, like, okay, they're did, did you pray? Yes. And we, oh, the glory fell. Yes. But we're having to unplug. We're having to unplug them. That's about when we start trying to figure out what we need to do. There is coming a generation, and we might as well say we are that generation, and bold ourselves in this and saying when they say the plug is being pulled, that we say, uh-uh, it's still not being pulled. And, was, and then see, your mind goes back to everybody that you've lost. I don't care. We have got to continually, every, every, every living example or every example of the past that does not line up with this word is nothing that we can put in our psyche or in our spirit to say this is who we are. Only this, 
only this. He, he confirmed the word. How many have you lost? I don't know. But if it, it, it doesn't matter how many they have stacked up behind us. Look at the faith of uh, Peter and John here. I love it. I love how, how these guys, what was on them. And this is in the midst of the outpouring. Now Peter and John, verse 1 of 3, chapter 3, went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go in to the temple, ask an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Now, j just stop for a second. Jesus is gone now. But these boys are just freshly filled with the Holy Ghost. They just come out of the oven, man. And they have, they have all faith. Or they, 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 just, they are just filled with knowing that the Jesus just left and said, Look, the works that I do, you're going to do also. The, these signs are going to continue to follow you just like they followed me. So go. Go. And here they are. You don't think that when they got to the gate beautiful, and I, I don't know where that guy Sunday, Sunday's exhortation about the guy that went to the pool of Siloam, he was just outside of the temple. He was somewhere on that road, one of those avenues. He might have been close to where this guy was sitting at. It didn't matter you don't think that the recollection immediately, the Holy Ghost didn't take Peter and John back to watching Jesus when he healed them, when he healed uh, uh, that man that particular day, when he healed uh, the guy when, when he was coming out of Jericho, what was his name, Bartimaeus? Here we are, again, the Holy Ghost brings, hey, wait a minute, I can do this. My master did this. And the word says, Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said unto him, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter, uh, then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered, entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking, praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at, what, at that which had happened unto him. They wondered. Now that's a sign and a wonder right there. Listen. But when the Holy Ghost, these guys were so saturated in their thoughts, uh, and what we are, see here, here, here is your, uh, what did Homer, what was the word that he used Sunday? Briefing. Here's your briefing. Okay. Change your thoughts, who you are. Okay. You are not who you think you are when you came in here. Do you understand that? I don't care how, how much you came in with any loads. I don't care how tired you felt. I don't care how discouraged you might have felt. I don't care. Listen, the, what the enemy does is he is continually trying to get us off of that and onto ourself. When you wake up, see, God wants to change this whole thing and make you understand that you're supposed to be a signs and wonders people. We're not... We're supposed to be a supernatural bunch. And the word says here that when Peter saw him, that he was basically, he, he became emboldened. He became, he said, what you're asking for, I don't have, but I'll tell you what I do have. This is what I have. And he reached down and he pulled him up. Listen, there's going to come a time, and I pray that it now is, 
that instead of walking by them, we don't do this, but instead of walking by them, they're sitting over there, you know, in the, the, in the mall or the grocery store. I'd like to. There is coming. Now, now don't, don't get me wrong. There's still going to be the leadership of the Holy Spirit. You're, you're still going to have to depend on him. I'm not saying run down. You're, you're, I don't know that you'll ever get where you just run down through the mall just grabbing everybody. But there is going to be a, a, come a, 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 a place that it becomes bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh, that when he says that we do without hesitation. What if? What if this doesn't take place? The what ifs are killing us in the spirit. The what ifs are causing us to be shy of what we're supposed to be. We begin to think about it, kick what if to the curb. And when he says to do it, go over there. If you stand there with egg on your face, if they die after you pray, no matter what happens, we are a people of signs and wonders. And it's time that when he says that we do without hesitation and we say, okay, he's the one that's going to confirm his word with signs and wonders. Get up. Get up. Well, I've seen him die. I have too. But that cannot be our history. That's got to be our past. It cannot be our future, I should say. That is our past. Hallelujah. What if, what if? Turn, turn with me. I like this illustration. Turn with me to Daniel. This is an Old Testament illustration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you where I find it here in Daniel. Daniel, I had a note on it. Daniel chapter 3. Look at this old story, but it happened. It really did happen. How many of you know that uh, these aren't just fairy tale stories? They really happened. Okay? This is the one of the. Th they, they commonly call them the three Hebrew children. They were grown men. They were actually uh, grown-ups, and they were actually those that were presiding over different provinces or different places in Babylon. And it says here, uh, I, I'm not going to read all the story. I'm just going to tell you that what you already possibly know, that this King Nebuchadnezzar... Uh, you know, even after he had been dealt with by God and even after Daniel had done some things with him, he became very prideful and he lifted up himself and he built this, you know, huge graven image of himself. And, uh, and he brought the nations together and he said, look, anytime that uh, the orchestra plays, I want, I want this sea of humanity. Uh, you've seen those seas of humanity uh, like when you'd see... Uh, the different uh, pilgrimages to, to Mecca where all the people would be you know, bowing down. And he, he said, when certain things happen, I want everybody to worship this image of me. Well, it just so happens that these three young men refused to do so. And, of course, we understood how many other story. They eventually were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. But let's look at verse 13 of 3. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought them, uh, these men, before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you be ready, that at the time that you hear, and he names all of these instruments, cornet, flute, harp, sax, but psaltery, decimal, all kinds of music, that you fall down and worship the image which I have made well. In other words, it will go good for you. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O king Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. Now, just stop right there for just a second. He brought them and was going to give them a reprieve. And basically said, look, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm very angry. 
Anybody that doesn't worship, you've already heard they're going to be burnt alive. But I'm going to give you an opportunity to consider this. I'm going to give you an opportunity to think about it, and the next time it happens, to commit yourself to being obedient to it, and it'll go well for you. And the Bible says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, basically they answered immediately and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful. In other words, we don't have to think about this. We don't even have to think about it. It's not necessary for us to stop and to think about it. See, this is where the church is coming to. All the thought of can we do this or can't we do it or what consequences are we going to suffer if we do it. And he said to them, they, they said to him, I like this, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. I like this. I like this because sometimes people say there's no buts. Here's a good but. Here's a good but. But if not, in other words, if he doesn't, if he doesn't, and we get, and we're not, we just get burned alive if we're charcoal. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Hallelujah. That's the resolve of the signs and wonders church. Because we're scared of the what ifs. We are really scared of that there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's something that hangs over our head. What if he doesn't back me up in this? What if I'm left? What if they die? What if this happens? Or what if, or what if I get in trouble in some way? Listen, they said we're, we're not even going to. Their, their boldness was this. We're not even going to consider this matter. God will be with us. But here's the bottom line. Even if he doesn't deliver us and we get burned up and we go to heaven as a result of it, we're still not going to bow down. We're still not. In other words, they went all the way to the end and dismissed the fear of what's going to happen if this doesn't happen. They said, look, it doesn't matter. Even if he doesn't, if God doesn't deliver us, we're going in. Hallelujah. Well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, God just said, go over there and pray for that person. Go, go, God, God just said, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. What if, what if, what if? Oh, shut up, what if? Kick what if to the curb. Go over there and if you have to, if you have to walk away and it looks like you're the biggest idiot in the world. You're not going to know that whether or not he would have backed you up unless you respond in obedience to what he said. The days of saying, because I've done it. I've done it. All of it. When we get home, God, forgive me. Send somebody else to pray for them. Make it another day. Give me another chance in the future. Give me another chance. We're going to become so emboldened that there's not going to be any God forgive me anymore. We're going to say, okay, 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 if I look like an idiot and he doesn't back me up, if he leaves me hanging, I'm going over there because the Holy Ghost said go over there. Amen. And I'm going to do what he said to do. Guess what? I'll bet you that he won't leave you hanging. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar got up, he looked, he said, my, he didn't say my God, but he did, he might as well, he said, look, how many people did we throw in there? They said, three, O king. He said, I see four, and one of them is likened to the Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will go with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Turn back over to the book of Acts. Because we would read that, what happened to those guys? What happened to Peter and what happened to Peter and John as a result? Well, as a result of them, uh, we just read that just a moment ago. They they reached down and he lifted this guy up. How many of you? 
just, I can picture that when, when Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he just pulled him right up. He just pulled him. I'm sure that there was something inside of him. The Holy Ghost was on him. And like I said, I'm not trying to get you to just run rampant and just without leadership. But it's just like when Paul and, and later in the book of Acts, perceived that the man that he was preaching to had faith, then Paul just acts on that. And uh, if we're people of the leadership of the Holy Ghost, he's going to give us ample. We don't have to worry about uh, broadcasting our seed. This ain't the day of, and never has been really, of knocking on doors. That don't get her done. That don't get her done. The leadership of the Holy Spirit. While you're out there among them, if he knows that what if has been cast to the side in your life, and you'll say, okay. Now, Peter pulled this guy up, but that wasn't the end of it. He was healed, of course. But, but look, look what, what happens as a result. As the lame man in verse 11 says, uh, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that was called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? And or why look ye as so earnestly on us, as though by our own power and holiness we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. Now, this is boldness. This is boldness. He's not being, he's, listen, not only is signs and wonders going to accompany us, but as a result of us, the political correctness that everybody's scared of is going is to go. It's going to go. But along with it is going to be some real nifty persecution. Okay? If you like to be liked, you've got a sad you, you, signs and wonder. If you like to be liked, signs and wonders are just not going to follow you. If you like people to like you, I mean all, all people to like you. I like people to like me. But if you like all people to like you, if you like your family, I don't, don't want to say that to my family. At some point, you need to make somebody mad. At some point, you need to make somebody mad, not trying to make them mad, but giving them the truth. And Peter and them said, look, he, they got him healed. He got him healed and said all the rest of them and they, all, they're fixing to get saved. You know, sometimes the Holy Ghost anointing, the emboldening anointing of God brings people together instead of, I mean, it'll bring people together that want the truth. And, and Peter said, y'all killed him. Y'all killed him. He didn't, he didn't mess around. He just said, when Pilate wanted to let him go, all of y'all killed him. That's a, what kind of pr preacher is that? But denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murder to be granted unto him. In other words, y'all traded the Lord of heaven for a murder and killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Do you think Peter would have won the political correctness contest of nowadays? What would the pundits say about him? This man is rude. And it says his name through the faith uh, you've killed uh, and God has raised him from the dead whereof we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom ye see and know. Yes or yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I know, or I, I won't through, I know that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Now, 
I just want to skip on down because he continues to go. Uh, Peter. Okay, so they brought, they brought Peter and John before. Uh, they brought him before the, uh, the rulers. Now let's look at chapter 4. This is what I wanted you to see. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. They laid hands on them and put them in a hold unto the next day, for it was not evening tide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed in the number of the men. I mean, all this hard stuff that he was saying, about 5,000 got saved. The men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that the rulers, the elders, and the scribes, and Ananias, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and the elders of Israel, If we this day be examined of the good deed done to this impotent man, by what means he has been made whole, be it known unto you all. And to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you all. Now, this is the same bunch of men that just killed Jesus. Do you understand that? Just not long ago, Peter's running from these guys and denying Christ. Now he's filled with the spirit that brings signs and wonders. And he's not only not scared, he's telling them, you bunch of killers, you crucified the Lord of heaven. And he's talking to the high priest. He's talking to the Sanhedrin. He's talking to all. Now he's, listen, signs and wonders are going to come again. And not only are they going to come again, but they're going to empower us to preach the gospel with boldness. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to believe right now. That's where we're at. No, don't, don't, take, don't take it on for, for next month or next year. He said, this is the stone which was set at naught by the builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is no, no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be. Do you understand what he, he was talking to? It would be the equivalent like if you would have put somebody that was uh, basically with no college degree, um, just a hardworking, you know, uh, middle class guy. Uh, you'd put them before um, our senators right now. I mean, that's the best, or in our president maybe, uh, or a president. I'm not going to speak specifically, but in front of a president, in front of senators, in front of Congress, and uh, they had done something so drastic as to do what these men had done. And now you are speaking to them with such a boldness that only heaven could supply that boldness. And the empowerment of that boldness uh, leaves you without fear. It leaves you without, listen, what we're going to be in these last days and present tense as people of signs and wonders is fearless and have a, a daringness, a daringness to say, I dare to believe, I, I do not fear I do not fear men, and I do not fear what if. I'm not going to fear the what if. And as a result of that, I am by the Spirit of God, I'm going to, to step out in a daringness, and whatever, wherever this takes me, that's where I'm going to be. Hallelujah. It really comes down to a place of abandonment. It really does. Now, you've got, you got to die don't, don't y'all, uh, any of y'all that ain't praying, don't, don't go try this. Because <laughs> you, you, you probably will be left out on a limb. But if you will go in there where he's at, and I'm not talking about a place where we just arrive where angels are singing, and you, the, but I'm talking about if you just go in there, when he says, and you know he said, 
you're going you're to abandon yourself and say, okay, I believe that it is going to follow me. And here's the deal. It didn't say that it was going to go in front of you. In other words, I like, it would be neat if it happens and then I pray. <laughs> then, I, then for sure I've got, I've got, I've got 100%. It'll, it'll only, I'll only pray after it happens. Okay, you do something and then I'll go over there and pray. Let me see you working first. He said, the signs will do what? They'll follow. In other words, you have to, there has to be an abandonment. I hear the command. I hear the voice. I hear the Holy Spirit. And as a result of it, I move on that action, or I, I'm taking action. And as a result of that daringness, it is a daringness that will come. As a result of the boldness that's going to take place. Hallelujah. Is he taking us somewhere? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, that's enough for tonight. How many are ready to go get somebody? I guess lay hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. What's that? Candy says, I want to pray first. <laughs> now you do. Hallelujah. Let me just ask you to uh, uh, prepare yourself to, to give tonight. If, if, uh, if you have something to give, we certainly appreciate it. And we're going to ask you to ask the Lord what that is right now and prepare that. And uh, if you'll make that ready. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to, to be in your word and to be in your presence. We ask you now to bless this time of giving and bless the people. But Father, we thank you for a weekend that is coming, the very powerful Sunday service and what you're going to do on Sunday night with the young adults. We just begin to speak life into that service. And Lord, that you will continue to disciple each and every one of us and bring us into these briefings, Lord. And we just thank you for it. Bless now this time of giving, and we thank you for it in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. If you'll stand with me. If you have something tonight, please do not forget to bring it forward. And we thank you so much. God bless you. We will see you Sunday. Amen.